All right, so buckle up, because today we are diving deep into the story of DeepSeek AI. DeepSeek AI. This Chinese company is making ways, and we got to find out why. Yeah. We've got articles, market analysis, mm -hmm. social media's buzzing. Right. Basically the whole nine yards. I've been seeing it everywhere. It's uh. To figure out what's going on with this DeepSeek. It's fascinating. Okay, so DeepSeek, yeah. not exactly a name everyone knows, right? <laughs> yeah. But then they drop this R1 reasoning model. Right. And suddenly everyone's talking about them. Yeah, comparing it to like the big guys. Yeah, like OpenAI. OpenAI, Google, even Anthropic. Anthropic. Like, oh. what's the deal? Why is everyone freaking out? Well, I mean, just imagine, right? Deep Seek comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Unveils this R1 model, and it's like David going up against Goliath. Mm -hmm. They're claiming it can rival these big established AI models. Yeah. But it's not just the performance, right? It's also the cost. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. That's the shocker. The budget, the $5.6 million. $5.6 million. That they spent building this thing. Yeah, that's wild. And they did it using those older NVIDIA chips, the H800s, mm -hmm. you know, because of those U.S. export restrictions. Right. Oh, yeah. It's like they took that constraint. They did. And they turned it into their superpower. I know, makes you wonder, right? Yeah. Have we been doing it all wrong? Have we just been spending way too much on AI? Like, is that the key to success? Yeah, I mean, because OpenAI is burning through billions. Billions. It's insane. And then you have DeepSeek just casually strolling in. And getting similar results. Getting these awesome results. It's crazy. With a fraction of the resources. It makes you think. Right. It really makes oh, you yeah. think. And they're not just talking the talk either, right? Yeah, no, no. This model actually delivers independent benchmarks confirm its capabilities. It's legit. So it's not just about saving money, right? No, definitely not. There's got to be some secret sauce that allowed them to do this. There is, there is. How did they achieve that level of efficiency? Well, they had to get creative. Right. In their white paper, they outlined some really fascinating techniques. Like what? One of them is using lower precision numbers in their calculations. Lower precision numbers, what does that even mean? Okay, so think of it like using a lower resolution image. Okay. A 16-bit number that's high res, lots of detail, mm -hmm. but it takes up more space. Right. They realized for some calculations they could use 8-bit numbers okay. without losing much accuracy. So it's like choosing a slightly lower resolution image. Exactly. That still looks good. It still looks good. But it loads faster. And uses less storage. So they saved on memory and processing power. They did. And the model still works great. Yeah, pretty clever, huh? That's really interesting. So it's all about finding those smart shortcuts right. without sacrificing the quality. Yeah. Do you think this could become a trend? I think it might. This constraint-driven innovation? Yeah, I think so. Because sometimes that's how the best stuff happens. It is. When you're forced to think outside the box. Exactly. And it reminds me of the early days of computing mm -hmm. when programmers had to be so creative Oh yeah. to work with the limited hardware they had. Yeah. They had to squeeze every ounce of power out of it. And that led to some amazing breakthroughs. It did. It shaped the whole industry. It's fascinating how that works. It is. But, okay, we've got to zoom out a bit now. Okay. Because this deep seek story gets even wilder. Wilder. How? When you consider the bigger picture, uh. the U.S. China tech rivalry. Right. The export restrictions. Yeah. The whole shebang. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like a geopolitical thriller. I know, it's intense. So remember those export restrictions on advanced chips to China? Mm -hmm. The ones meant to slow down their AI progress? Right. Well, it seems like those restrictions might have backfired. Oh, how so? Because they kind of pushed Chinese companies to find workarounds. Oh, I see. And that might have actually fueled their innovation. So it's like they accidentally made them stronger. Exactly. Like Deep Seek's efficiency is a perfect example. Oh, okay. Yeah. Remember Huawei? Yeah. And how they develop their own AI chips and operating systems. After being cut off, yeah. After being cut off from U.S. suppliers. Right. This feels like the same thing. Yeah, turning adversity into advantage. Another plot twist in this story. It's like a movie. It's crazy. And to top it off. What? Deep Seek's founder met with the Chinese premier. Oh. Uh -huh. Highlighting just how much attention they're getting. That's a big deal. From the government. Yeah. It feels like we're witnessing a shift. 
the shift in the um, global balance of AI power. Oh wow! And it's happening right now. That's huge. But hold on, right. there's another layer to this. Another layer. Okay. So we gotta talk about the open source paradox. The open source paradox. Okay. So DeepSeek made their R1 model open source. Open source, so anyone can use it. Anyone can use it. Modify right. it. That's pretty unusual. Which, on the surface, sounds great. Right. Transparency, collaboration. Yeah. A win for the AI community. Yeah. But, but there's a but. There's a big but. Okay, I'm intrigued. Even though it's open source, yeah. DeepSeek's model still shows signs of censorship. Censorship? What kind of censorship? Censorship on topics that the Chinese government considers sensitive. Okay, like what? We're talking Tiananmen Square. Oh, wow. Taiwan. Mm. Even comparisons between Xi Jinping and Winnie the Pooh? Oh, they don't like that, huh? Apparently not. Wow, that's pretty blatant. Right. Especially for something that's supposed to be open source. Yeah, and this isn't just speculation. No. News outlets like The Guardian and Reuters have reported on it. Oh, really? Showing how the model just shuts down or changes the subject. When these topics come up, yep. that's pretty wild. It's a dilemma, right? It is. How much can we trust an open source model right. that's still subject to censorship? Especially when you think about the potential security risks exactly. for other countries. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. It is. It really makes you think about the balance mm -hmm. between transparency and control. Yeah, that's a tough one. And speaking of different perspectives, okay. let's shift gears and talk about Europe's reaction to all of this. Europe, okay. It's kind of caught middle, right? Between the U.S. and China. Uh, yeah, between these two AI titans. It's a tough spot. And they're desperately trying to avoid relying on either one. Makes sense. Which is why they're pushing for this idea of strategic autonomy. Strategic autonomy. Yeah, I've heard that term. It's a concept that's been championed by French President Emmanuel Macron. Right, right. Basically, the idea is for Europe to build its own AI capabilities. So they're not dependent on anyone else. Exactly. Okay, I see. And we're already seeing this play out. Oh, yeah. How so? With the French AI startup Mistral. Mistral. Yeah. Their CEO is basically saying. What's he saying? Wake up, Europe. Okay. Get in the game or get left behind. He's not mincing words. No, he's not. That's pretty direct. But here's the thing. What's that? Europe faces some serious hurdles. Like what? They've got a history of bureaucracy. Ah, oh, yeah. A lack of unified vision for AI development. Right. And maybe even a touch of elitism. Oh, interesting. That could be holding them back. Okay, so they've got some work to do. They do. It's like they're playing catch up. While the AI landscape is changing so fast. At warp speed. Yeah. And now with DeepSeek proving that you don't need billions of dollars right. to disrupt the industry. It changes everything. The pressure is on for Europe to find its own path. Its own way to succeed. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. It is, for sure. Because the AI world is not slowing down. Not at all. It's only getting more complex and more competitive. Absolutely. And we'll be here to break it all down for you. Sounds good to me. So much to unpack with this Deep Seek story. Yeah, it's wild. But before we go too far, mm -hmm. I think we should circle back mm -hmm. some of Deep Seek's technical achievements. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, their efficiency is insane. It's mind-boggling. I'm curious oh. your take on some of their innovations. Oh, absolutely. You know, we talked about the older hardware. Right. Like clever algorithms. Mm -hmm. But I want to dig a little deeper. Okay, like what? For example, yeah. they use something called float 8-bit numbers. Float 8-bit? Instead of the usual 16-bit. Okay, I'm not a programmer, so yeah. break that down for me. Okay, sure. What's the significance of that? So it's all about finding that balance. Okay between precision and efficiency. Okay. Think of a 16-bit number like a high-res image. Okay, got it. Lots of detail. Mm -hmm. But it takes up more space. Right. Deep Seek realized yeah. for some calculation, mm -hmm. they could use these 8-bit numbers. The lower precision ones? Yeah. Okay. And wouldn't really affect the accuracy. So it's like choosing a lower-res image. Exactly. That still looks good. But loads faster. And uses less storage. Exactly. Smart. Right. So they saved on memory and processing power, mm -hmm. but wouldn't using those lower precision numbers yeah. increase the risk of errors? That's where their other innovations come in. Oh, okay. Like they use this technique mm -hmm. called a mixture of experts model. A mixture of experts. To compensate. What is that? So instead of training one giant AI, okay. they trained dozens of smaller ones. Oh, wow. Each one specialized for a specific task or type of data. So it's like uh, uh, assembling a team of specialists yeah. instead of relying on one generalist. Precisely. I like that. Each expert brings their own skills mm -hmm. 
and the model can switch between them. Depending on what's needed. Yeah. That's really cool. Right. It's like an orchestra. Yeah. Each instrument playing its part. To create this beautiful Something like a harmonious whole. I love that analogy. And remember, yeah, all of this was done older, <laughs> less powerful hardware. Because of those restrictions. Yeah. It's pretty remarkable. It speaks to their ingenuity. Their adaptability. It reminds me of those early programmers yeah. having to work within limitations. Yeah. Sometimes those constraints they push you. lead to the biggest breakthroughs. They really do. It's fascinating. It is. So let's talk market reaction. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that initial stock market dip. Oh, it's dramatic. Was that just a knee-jerk reaction mm. or a sign of something bigger? I think it's safe to say. What? Deep Seek has shaken things up. Oh, for sure. That stock market shock sent a message. Yeah, what message? Investors are reassessing. The AI landscape. The full AI landscape. Interesting. Because the old assumption was yeah. AI development is a winner-take-all game. Right. The companies with the most money. The biggest data centers. Oh, they would dominate. They'd rule the world. But DeepSeek has challenged that. In a big way. Yeah, because if you can get similar results mm -hmm. with cheaper hardware. And smarter algorithms. The playing field suddenly levels out. It does. And that's got to be a threat. To who? To those big players. Like OpenAI. Like OpenAI, Google. Who've been operating under that bigger is better philosophy. Especially OpenAI. Yeah. They've been burning through cash. So much cash. That recent deal with SoftBank. Yeah, the billions. It suggests they're doubling down. On that strategy. Well, uh, is it sustainable? That's the question, isn't it? In the long run. Yeah, if DeepSeek keeps proving them wrong. And if other companies follow suit. Showing you don't need billions. To achieve amazing results. Investors are going to start asking questions. How about OpenAI's approach? Yeah. It's a wake-up call. Well, for the whole industry. You can't just throw money at the problem. It's not just about the money. It's about finding that sweet spot right. between efficiency and performance. Hmm. And what about the broader implications for, for the AI ecosystem as a whole? Hmm. That's interesting. Because yeah, DeepSeek's success yeah. could empower smaller companies. Like startups oh, in oh. countries that don't have those huge budgets. Exactly. That's amazing. It could democratize AI development. Level the playing field. It's a fascinating dynamic. It really is. DeepSeek has thrown a wrench in the works. I'm and now we get to watch. And see how the industry adapts. This is going to be good. Okay, so we've talked tech, market shifts, even like the whole global power play thing. Mm -hmm. But I think we got to zoom in on the human side of all this. The human side? Yeah, like what does this deep seek story tell us about <sighs> human ingenuity, the future of work, you know? It's a good point. It's easy to get caught up in right. the algorithms, the money. Yeah, the billion dollar valuations but at the end of the day yeah ai it's a tool made by humans to solve human problems okay. yeah. and deep seek story mm. it's a reminder that innovation yeah it can come from anywhere it doesn't have to be silicon valley exactly it can come from a team in china with limited resources facing those constraints yeah and still coming up with these game-changing solutions yeah it's incredible it challenges the whole notion oh that innovation only happens. In those elite institutions. Yeah, those prestigious places, yeah. Deep Seek's team. Right. They didn't come from that background. Their success shows. Talent is everywhere. Yeah. It's not just concentrated in a few places. Which brings us back to what? strategic autonomy. Right. If Europe wants to compete, mm -hmm. they need to think differently. Not just try to copy Silicon Valley. Yeah. They got to find their own way. Tap into their own talent. Create an environment yeah. where creativity can flourish. Absolutely. That seems more sustainable in the long run. It does. And this applies to individuals, too. Individuals. Yeah, like all of us. Okay. Because AI is changing everything. The way we work, the way we live. You need to adapt. Figure out how to thrive. Exactly. What skills are going to be in demand? Yeah. How can we use our human strength? In this AI-driven world. It's a big question. It is. And it's not just about learning to code right. or becoming a data scientist. It's about... That, those skills AI can't replicate. Like what? Critical thinking. Okay. Yeah. Creative problem solving. Mm -hmm. Communication. Collaboration. And empathy. Yeah. Those things that make us human. Those are the things that will set us apart. In a world where AI is everywhere... We need to be proactive. Not just react to what's happening. The future isn't something that just happens to us. We create it. The choices we make today will shape what that future looks like. 
So for our listener out there yeah. who might be feeling a bit overwhelmed by all this change, all this tech. Remember Deep Seek's story? It's a good reminder yeah. that limitations can spark innovation. Talent can come from anywhere. That human ingenuity is powerful. We can overcome any challenge. And here's a final thought. Okay, what is it? The real game changer. Might not be the AI itself. But how we choose to use it. How we integrate it into our lives. Will we use it to amplify our abilities? Solve complex problems. Create a better world. The possibilities are endless. They are, and a little daunting. Yeah, it's a lot to think about. So that brings us to the end of our deep seek deep dive. We've covered a lot of ground. From the technical details. To the market impact. To the ethical considerations. It's been quite a journey. It has. I hope this deep dive has sparked your curiosity, given you new insights, and maybe even left you with more questions than answers. That's the beauty of exploration. It's not about reaching a destination. It's about the journey. So keep exploring. Keep questioning. Yeah, keep learning. Because the AI revolution is just getting started. And we'll be here to guide you through it every step of the way.